Entrepreneur Randy Kirk is of the mind that Tesla will not produce 1.6, 1.7, not even 1.8 million this year, but 2.1 million plus. I'm Brian, welcome to my Tesla weekend. <laughs> So yeah, how are you, Randy? Good to see you. I am as about as good as you can get. Um, you know, it's almost spring. I should mention Randy Kirk is the best-selling author of The Elon Musk Method, which I come to find out is not just the least effective form of birth control ever, and The Elon Musk Mission, which he co-wrote with uh, our good friend Lars Strandritter from Best in Tesla. Great books, check them out. They're bestsellers, so you know he's doing something, right? But you're also an entrepreneur. You also know business. You also have a YouTube channel. Who knows, maybe I'll link it. Maybe I'll link your books too, because I'm, you know, I just gotta, right? So the big thing is, I caught you on an interview with Herbert recently, and you were saying, no, 1.7, 1. what are you talking? No, 2.1 million plus. 2.2. 2.2 million plus. Right. Oh, that's right. 2.21. I got it. Yes. I got it mixed up. There you go. So let's go factory by factory. Fremont, uh, what do you see as the upside there? How are they going to increase production over what we've seen? I think I'm okay with Fremont being between 550 and 650. Um, I'm not particularly looking for anything great out of Fremont. Maybe we'll get a, a little increase there, but that's not... And who knows what's going to happen with the Highland? I mean, maybe the Highland will have a smaller footprint for manufacturing. Maybe that'll allow them to get way more out of out of uh, Fremont. That would be fantastic. That will be just a surprise that we can all enjoy. But no, I'm I'm figuring 550 to 650 out of out of Fremont. No big deal in Fremont. So Shanghai, the next big factory, is running out of room. Now they are still doing stuff there. My update tracker will have some good side-by-sides to show some interesting new developments, but they're not production related. They're more logistics related and they're adding solar panels and whatnot. But uh, what do you see as the upside in Shanghai? They're already well above nameplate capacity. Where can they go from here? So based on history, we've seen a number of months where the run rate was very close to a million. So I'm okay with that. I'd say, all right, let's just figure a million. Um, and maybe there's an outsized chance as they maybe get some efficiencies this year, maybe it's a million one. Maybe it's a lot more because maybe there's efficiencies, but again, that would just be a cherry on the top. I'm looking at uh, under a million because the first quarter they didn't, they didn't hit the million run rate. But overall, uh, 950, a million probably for the total year. Okay, so that already gets us to about 1.6 million. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> so we're a big chunk of the way there. Berlin, what, uh, I mean, I know the answer, but what do you see as the upside in Berlin? <laughs> okay, so it's not, it's not hard at this point. Uh, it's just math. So if you're increasing your run rate at 1,000 a, uh, a per week per month, right? So... 4,000 in at the end of December, I mean, at the end of, uh, of uh, uh, March, five, I'm sorry, 4,000 at the end of February, 5,000 at the end of March, 6,000 at the end of April, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, maybe that's not going to be, a com you know, every month exactly in lockstep, but we can guess that maybe that's about what's going to happen. Well, then you're going to be adding about 25, 26,000 uh, per quarter in Austin and Berlin. We can do both factories at once. You're gonna be sure. adding 25 or 26,000 per factory per quarter. So you gotta sell those. <laughs> so let's call it 25 to make it a nice round number. That makes 50,000 just from those two factories per quarter addition, in addition to last year's number. So what is your target for each one? We're at 1.6, so that would only be 250,000 from each factory, a little bit more, 260, 270? There you go. <laughs> okay, and that's good news. I don't know how many folks watching today watch my regular uh, updates. I do quite a few of them, and so do, so do you. Uh, in Berlin, in Texas, they're currently each running just one line. 
and they are both in the process of installing additional lines. Berlin might take a little longer to ramp on that because they're just now finishing the extension to the Stamping Cathedral, which will triple it in size, which coincides with three lines instead of one. But they can probably get a big chunk of the way there before that's even done and dialed in. And the same thing we see in Texas, two more lines that are already installed and being configured as we speak. And we can see a massive stockpile of castings outside on the northeast corner, which would indicate that even without expanding the casting area, the casting capacity, they've got some room to, to increase just from existing stuff. So you could triple, by the end of the year, the run rate, you could triple from those two factories. And the run rate's already, I mean, 5,000 a week, you can do the math, that's a quarter right. million. Right. They don't have to expand much to get above 2.2 million. Why do you think Wall Street doesn't get this? Well, the first question would be, why does all kinds of folks that we know and respect that are not on Wall Street not get it? I won't mention any names right now. You would. So what I've been saying uh, over and over and over again is in order to get less than 2.21 million this year, Tesla would have to decide to stop something. They're going to have to not do a, a you know, fourth uh, shift or maybe even a third shift, they're going to have to say, you know what, forget, we're not going to do that next line. Um, they would have to stop their progress. There's no way it's, it's just math. <laughs> right, right. And, and that's the crazy thing is Wall Street doesn't famously doesn't understand disruption. They look at every trajectory as linear, despite innovation after innovation following an S-curve. And that's where we're at. That's... Well, now that's the other side of it, of course, the other side of it. So production, if Elon, we, uh, if we trust Elon's word, they're going to be flat out. All right. If they're going to be flat out and margins be damned, they're going to be flat out. Um, then they're going to be flat out. Well, that's 2.21 million. And it might really actually be 2.2, 2.3, 2.35, because that's all potentially in the works if they really are flat out. Um, but then you got to sell them, OK? And so that becomes the big argument about advertising versus uh, lowering costs. What you got to do is you've got to sell a lot more hardware between now and the end of the year. It's not insignificant to try to sell 50 to 60, 70,000 more vehicles per month than you were the last quarter. I mean, I'm sorry, per quarter than you were the last quarter. That's not right. insignificant. So what, do you, what how are you going to do that? Are you going to trust advertising to get that done? Hmm. I don't think so. But you know that if you lower the cost, you're going to increase the TAM. Um, and if, you're in, if you increase the total addressable market, um, and here's the thing. This is new. I've just come up with this last week. So you're only the first person outside my channel to talk about this. Tesla has data, right? We yeah. all know Tesla has lots of data. A little bit. Okay, I've been a manufacturer, and right now I am a importer who sells on Amazon. And they have unique data when it comes to the selling situation. As a manufacturer myself, for years I was selling through the regular chain, the regular, you know, you sell it to the wholesaler, the wholesaler sells it to the dealer, the dealer sells it to the consumer. As I'm involved in that chain of getting it through the pipeline, I have to sell all those levels. I have to advertise at all those levels. I have to manage all those levels. If the wholesaler doesn't move it through to the retailer, he stops doing business. If the retailer says, hey, it's not moving out to the consumer, he stops. He just takes it off the shelf. So I have to advertise to the consumer, advertise to the retailer, maintain relationships with the wholesaler, make sure all of those things are happening. And I don't have much data coming in, except eventually the orders will come in from the wholesaler that tells me I'm selling something. Well, I now have an Amazon business where I'm an importer and selling on Amazon. I get minute by minute information right here on my phone that tells me exactly what I'm doing every single minute of every single day. I know what I'm selling. I can look it up by item. I can look it up by how many it sold this week, this month. 
I can raise my prices. I can advertise specifically to specific products. I, can, there, I have all these options available to me. Well, who do we know that sells automot automobiles in the BEV space and in jet you know, in overall? At all, at sure. All? Who has that kind of data? And they also have the only app for charging in the industry. So they know what's being, they know what the car is being charged up. They know what the car is doing. They know if some, if a, so for instance, I was thinking about this this morning. If I called right now and I wanted to order a Model 3, my wife's been bugging me to get a Model 3. She's got the Y, she wants me to get a 3. If I called right now and I looked at it and I said, oh, mm, the price is too high and I bug out, I stop, I stop the order. Tesla's got my information, they know I've been there, and they know that I bugged out. Now, if two days from now they lower the price, which they did last week, they lower the price in the United States, and I go back on, and I notice this time that the price is lower, and I, go, and I buy it, what do they know happened? They get the data, just like I do on Amazon, to be able to make minute by minute decisions with regard to how they move metal all around the world. And when you're looking at the legacy guys, a complaint I've seen from Bear at Bear's Workshop is he said, the reason cars only come in six colors isn't because that's what consumers want, it's because that's what dealers want. <laughs> and we don't know what customers necessarily want because that's just what they've done. It would be nice to see some other colors. And yeah, you're right, when the chain is that long, and complicated, it makes it harder to know. And further on the app, now they're allowing non-Teslas to charge at supercharger stations. Can you imagine if Tesla owners had to get an app from Ford or GM or Lucid in order to have a complete charging experience? The wealth of people, uh, there are a lot of people who still don't understand that data is worth more than products in right. many, many cases. Right, so I just, so people have been saying for the last week, I've noticed almost all of the Tesla bulls are saying, I trust Tesla, the management, to know what to do with regard to this pricing issue versus advertising or whatever else. And well, the trust might be well placed if you start thinking about this micro, uh, their ability to micromanage the pricing on a day-by-day -day basis, a product-by-product -product basis, and even by a region-by-region -region basis, they can be changing the prices based on the information that's coming into them on their, on their website. There are a few people who have looked in depth at the business management philosophy and style of Elon Musk as our guest today, Randy Kirk. His books are on the shelf behind him. They're in the description. I'll even cover my face with the Amazon page. And the, and the thing is, looking back, I have second guessed Tesla's strategy from the beginning. And all of the things I would have said, don't you ever do, have been their hugest successes. Things like abandoning skateboards in favor of bespoke production. Uh, things like building your own battery factory. Things like moving to Texas and paying 96 million for a piece of land that needs so much remediation. Sorry, 130 million for land that needs so much remediation, it's insane but it all works and it all makes sense. And as time goes on, it becomes clear. Making the Cybertruck, what are you thinking? Oh, you're thinking you found a way to make a better truck, vastly cheaper, in a way that people are going to eventually learn to love. So we're not talking about investment advice here, but there are Tesla investors watching. What would you say to people who are buying the stock, holding the stock, selling the stock, when it comes to these changes in prices, this volume, versus the actual margin, the, the earnings per share, should we be worried? So again, you might be short term, you might be long term. I'm both, I hold shares that I probably won't sell for you know 10 years and I also do leaps. So sometimes I do jump in and out of leaps. Um, so I do both and I, so I do care about the day-to-day -day stock price. But the reality is, is that if you're playing short term, then typically what you're doing is you're loving Tesla because it goes up and down so much. That's the perfect environment to be a day trader in. You don't care if the general trend is up if you're a day trader. And you don't care if the general trend is flat and the street doesn't get you for a while if you're a long-term trader. So I don't know what all the nonsense is about. So what all I can say is a lot of people last year got caught for the very first time maybe on Tesla um, and didn't realize that the macro was gonna be a huge effect on Tesla. 
but you just follow the macro and you'll see that Tesla was just like other, um, I call them risky growth stocks. That's how they're being traded this year as a risky growth stock. When that, when that narrative changes and they start to see Tesla as no, no longer risky, but still growth, then it'll, then it'll begin to act more like an apple. But that could take, I'm saying that could take at least nine to 12 months. Tesla will have to prove itself quarter by quarter. Every single quarter, they're gonna have to show that that operating margin continues to be in that 15 to 18% range or even better. And if they do that, game over. So I'm game saying over. Three, three, 400 by the end of the year, 700 by the end of next year. And that doesn't count RoboTaxi or Optimus. Right, and those things aren't priced in really. No. And they can't be because whoever gets to level five first is going to be a trillion is going to see a trillion added to their market cap overnight. Well, over probably three to six months as everyone finishes waking up. Yeah, uh, it won't take long to see them everywhere. And what I've always said is if Tesla is second or third to the autonomy game, as long as they're only behind by less than two years, they still win because they've got the fleet already built right. where everyone else will have to start designing cars. And I, I'm sure you've seen what a Waymo vehicle looks like with those <laughs> seamlessly integrated sensors. How can you tell that that's, it's, uh, it looks normal to me. Uh, la last thing on this, we didn't talk about semi. When do you think semi will reach an appreciable number in terms of the percentage of production that we even need to really talk much about it. So I'm, I just could continue. I always trust Elon. It doesn't mean that he's always on time, but until he tells us otherwise, I'm still going with his 50,000 in 2024. I know that Ooh. sounds, how in the world can he build 50,000 in 2024 when the facility is not ready to even start putting in the equipment yet, but I'll wait for you. I'll wait for your channel to start telling me that in fact, maybe they're loading equipment in for the actual production line before the new stuff is added on. That's what some mm. people are suggesting, that mm. maybe they'll move things around in, in Sparks in order to start making the actual line. And then as they expand the factory, they'll put the stuff back that they you know had to move out in the yard or something. So mm. who knows, but Elon has not retracted <clears throat> the 50,000 in 2024 yet. He doesn't retract though. He just, uh, he, he waits, he waits. They haven't broken ground on that part of the expansion yet. So 50 in 2024 might be a bit optimistic, but we shall see. And yeah, the battery situation in Nevada is looking quite promising uh, to maintain for at least the medium term. Okay, so my question for the viewers is what did we miss? What did we misunderstand? What do you think? I, I have to get you to tell me in the comments, what do you think the year will finish out at, at production for production and deliveries? Randy's saying 2.21 could be higher. We'll find out. Uh, and my numbers, I don't have them handy, but I'm, I'm in the same range as you. 2 million plus is absolutely lock it in, done deal. But I've been wrong before. Not by much, but I've been wrong. So a quick thanks to my patrons who get early access bonus content, literally help keep the channel running. Thank you guys so much. And uh, yeah, uh, for that matter, stay tuned, stay juicy, and I can't wait to hear from all you clever robots. And there will be another one or two Randy Kirk interviews over the next week or two. So definitely come back for those, check out his channel. And Randy, thank you so much. Happy to be here.